Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a Vintage Hall of Fame review from the year 1985, the same year that the Ram was made, uh, and it is Vintage Calvin Klein's Obsession for Women. Now, uh, we are also going to review the men's one, but I wanted to start with the women's version because the women's version actually came out first. It came out in 1985, and the men's version came out in 1986. So we'll do a separate review for the men's, uh, but um, Obsession for Women from 1985 is kind of a decade, um, I would say, defining scent, okay? It's a scent that uh, became very popular and synonymous with the 80s and uh, early 1990s, and what's crazy is I have done a lot of work on this channel, okay? Almost 900 videos. We're going to be coming up on 900 videos here in two and a half years with the channel, which is absolutely insane. It's a, it's a ton amount, a, a, a very large amount of work and effort uploading all these videos. Um, but one house that I have yet to do a review on, which is shocking, is Calvin Klein. I do not think I've done an individual review on the House of Calvin Klein, so we're going to change that today with one of their most popular fragrances, Obsession. And I have to give a special shout out to a few people. One of my Perfume God people sent me a very generous decant of the Vintage Obsession, okay? Um, and this kind of got me moving on doing this review, because this was a long time coming, okay? And you can see, sorry, I just put lotion on my hands and now I can't get it out. Um, Oh, come on, baby. I want to show you how much uh, she sent me, and I can't get it out. Oh, okay, whatever. I'll have to come back to that. Uh, but it's a pretty fat decant. Let's say 5 to 10 mils, okay? Very generous decant size that she sent me. And then, this is an actual vintage 5 mil. This is like a little lipstick atomizer thing. So you open it up, and it's actually a spray. And if you take a look closely, you'll see cologne spray. So when this came out in 1985, it was originally released as a cologne, okay? Um, so the original versions are cologne. When I first got into kind of hunting down different uh, versions and making sure that we're looking at the proper, you know, um, distributor and who made the scent and all that stuff. I mean, you need a magnifying glass to see that. But this does say Calvin Klein Cosmetics underneath, made in the USA. Um, and I thought as long as it was Calvin Klein Cosmetics, it was the original. Not true. Uh, there are some Calvin Klein Cosmetics bottles that are Eau de, Toil or Eau de Parfum or Eau de Toilette, depending on which one you're looking at. Excuse me. Um, and uh, actually, I think it's Eau de Parfum um, uh, that are not the cologne. So the cologne is actually first. Oh, it is absolutely stunning. It deserves a Vintage Hall of Fame review. If you're not familiar, there's an entire Vintage Hall of Fame playlist, if you will, dedicated to the fragrances that I think have had the biggest impact on the fragrance world. So I've reviewed things like uh, Chanel Antaeus, Eigner Super Fragrance, ton of vintage reviews on there you can go check out. But um, it's crazy to me that the work I've done on this channel has not involved the Calvin Klein fragrance. So we're going to fix that today. We're going to go back in time to the year 1985. Um, and so a couple things about Calvin Klein Obsession from 1985. It was perfumed by a gentleman named Jean Guichard. Now, if that name sounds familiar, that's because his son, Aurelien Guichard, is a niche perfumer nowadays. He owns his own house. He's one of the uh, perfumers who kind of branched out and went his own way and started his own house. His house is Maitre Premier. I do not like his house. I do not like his work. I'm not a fan of his son's work. I am a fan of the father's work, so Jean Guichard, I think, is an amazing perfumer. Um, and to top it off, to put the little cherry on top with Obsession from 1985, um, it was actually um, creative director of Obsession was a lady named Anne Gottlieb, okay? Anne Gottlieb is a sort of icon. She's an all-star. She is a master of spotting trends and in, in going with things and changing things here and there. She's had a ton of hit fragrances under her belt. Many brands bring her in as like an ambassador to make sure that the scent is going in the right direction. And she did her job with um, Obsession, okay? So I want to read you a little quote that is from Women's Daily, Women's Wear Daily from the January 18, 1985 edition. This is from Mr. Klein. The name Obsession is big, like a movie poster for this era, said Calvin Klein. I think of everything I've ever done, how obsessed I was. Everyone is obsessed in the 80s, 
And of course, the name suggests an obsession with someone, a man obsessed by a woman. Okay, the good old days. Um, so, some people say this was the brand's first big blockbuster fragrance. Um, for me, my favorite Calvin Klein, and actually one I will be doing a vintage Hall of Fame review on, is this little bad boy. This is Calvin by Calvin Klein from 1981, I believe the early 80s. Um, so this is more my personal style of fragrance. I would, I would much rather wear this, but I definitely give props. And, um, and am I obsessed with obsession? Yes, I am. There's a lot of different reasons why. The first thing I want to address though, is this version of originality. I don't listen to very many YouTubers. I try not to, mostly because it's a lot of bullshit or they'll do something like, wait, before you buy obsession, Watch this video so I can sell you on some stupid clone brand that's paying me $10,000 to hype their bullshit. You know, so I try not to listen to very many YouTubers, right? But there's a lot of noise out there about originality with Obsession. That Obsession is this uh, original fragrance. Nothing's like it. It's, it's a landmark fragrance from the 1980s. And while I think it definitely deserves this Vintage Hall of Fame review, it deserves the spotlight. It deserves for us to discuss what it is and... and, and um, the uh, impact that it had on other perfumes, we have to go back to the past and discuss fragrances that came first to understand Obsession, okay? Um, and so you really have to go back, for me, for my mind, I mean, you could go way back. Uh, you could go all the way back to decades before there are fragrances that had this powdery, uh, some say Obsession is slightly trashy, like there's a sexualized, trashy side of Obsession, and I see exactly what they mean. We'll talk a little bit about that as the fragrance review continues, but where this started for me, sort of the point in time that I can pinpoint and say, okay, this is where I can kind of see this style coming into fruition, is Lagerfeld Cologne. Now, this is the more modern Lagerfeld classic, but this is for men from 1978. Definitely unisex though, okay? Especially the more modern bottles. But this powdery, there's like an orange line running through the middle of this fragrance, and it's a very powdery, musky affair, okay? Very, it's a very musky, powdery boy. Um, but I love Lagerfeld. The, the cologne version, which is what it was originally called, before it had this sort of cheap plastic cap. This was actually metal back in the day. Carl Lagerfeld designed this bottle. When you pulled the cap off of the, of the vintage, which I have, it's just under lock and key, it would go plink, because it was, um, it was metal. You know, it was like one of those World War II era guns when you when you uh, sh when you shoot the last shot in the magazine, it would go blink, and and uh, the the um, magazine would sort of shoot off. I forget which gun that is, but um, but yes. So this I think inspired many fragrances to come. One of which is from 1981, and it's probably the closest fragrance to Obsession. And I can totally see someone who knows their fragrance history, like Ann Gottlieb as creative director, making Obsession, molding it, designing it to take this DNA and take it even to greater heights, or, or greater sales heights, I should say. I don't think Obsession is necessarily a better fragrance than the one I'm about to show you, because they both play in similar sandboxes. Uh, and this is heavily inspired. Obsession is heavily inspired by this. This is Must de Cartier. Uh, Parfum. Now, uh, this is a vintage. So uh, if you take a look here, you'll see the short ingredients list. It's like, oh, you want the ingredients? Sure. It's fragrance, moron. Uh, and so there you go. The good old days. Again, the good old days. Um, they were the good old days. So, uh, so here is the refill. And I will do a review. I've, I've probably worn 10 mils of this, so I have probably another 15 or so to go. But um, I, I know this fragrance very, very well. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this DNA was inspired by Lagerfeld. Now, one year after Must de Cartier came out, which this is 1981, Lagerfeld released their version, which is 1982, and it was called KL. So KL, this is for women. Um, the Pure Parfum looks like a giant uh, version of the cap, basically, okay? This is a splash, so I don't really want to take the cap off. But um, KL came out one year after Must de Cartier. And then, right the exact same time as Obsession for Men, they put out KL Ohm. And these are definitely competing against each other from 86. So, where am I going with that? Well, where I'm going with that is that in perfume, everything is sort of inspired by something else, in my opinion. 
you very rarely get something that's just completely out of left field and you know there's usually some sort of an evolution just like if you watch animals over long periods of time go through evolutionary processes there's usually steps you know they they uh, don't just go from a fish in the water to walking with legs right there is some sort of process that happens and that's exactly what we're seeing here with obsession so to go even further with that one more step is obsession was such a huge hit that in early 90s, 1991, Dominique Ropion put out a fragrance for the house of Critzia called Crazy Critzia. And this is very heavily inspired by that Musta Cartier Obsession DNA. So it's not just Obsession is one in a long line of fragrances that built up to it. Now, it may be the most popular. You could make the argument that Obsession for Women was the most popular of all of the fragrances that I've just showed you, okay? But it doesn't take away from the fact that it's an evolutionary process, right? When you smell a fragrance, remember you're smelling like a point in time. And here we're smelling 1985, okay? Um, with steamy advertisements, you know, the girl uh, looking at the camera, vulnerable, um, with kind of her shirt down almost to the point of one of her boobs falling out, you know, th those kind of uh, imageries came about with obsession. So when you first spray, you're basically hit with this soft powdery ambery accord that lasts all the way into the dry down that's the first thing that most people are going to focus on but really there are some very interesting brush strokes which make especially vintage obsession so amazing so the first thing is you're basically hit with this herbaceous green basil all right so the opening has this basil and what they call green notes now i don't know necessarily what those green notes are i can take a stab in the dark um, and, and I can guess that there's something like galbanum in here, but one of the biggest differences between Obsession and what, what I would call, um, its predecessor, Must de Cartier, is that Must de Cartier focuses on this big resinous galbanum, okay? It's green, it's thick, it's rich, it's dense. Here, the ancillary notes around that powdery oriental accord, which I have heard some people try to refer to this as a... Uh, futuristic Shepra of some sort because they say well it's got bergamot in the top it's got um, uh, it's got oak moss in the base it probably has labdanum in there um, and I'm like eh, I don't know I think that's really kind of pushing it it is to my nose um, a oriental fragrance it's an ambery oriental like if you can't agree that this is an ambery oriental i don't know where we can go from there but to me this smells like a ambery oriental take on a fragrance okay um but the brush strokes sort of revolve around it okay so it never gets in the way of that overall ambery warm musky type of chord you get that from the very beginning all the way to the dry down but what makes it so beautiful is the way that those Accords, those little bits and pieces that sort of revolve around that that heart of obsession, uh, stay ancillary. They don't overtake it. They, you know, it never feels like um, that basil, that herbaceous green basil takes over, and you're like, wow, this is a green scent. Never, never, not in my opinion. You will get the the greenness, but it's so smooth. Everything is so unbelievably smooth, and it blends with those powders, the blends with those ambers, the vanillas, the musks, right? And it creates something really, I think, is amazing. Uh, I think it's special. I think it deserves to be celebrated, and that's why we're doing this video today. So the basil basically comes across to your nose when you get it, because you'll definitely get it in the first 15 minutes or so. It comes across as this very fresh, herbaceous, green, earthy, vegetal smell. Sometimes there's a little bit of a sweetness associated with the top of the fragrance because there's vanilla in the top and there's vanilla in the base. So you can see they're definitely focusing on this uh, ambery, oriental type of accord, okay? There are some citruses in here, mandarin, orange, and bergamot. The older bottles especially, be very careful because it's very common, especially for these vintage splash bottles, which some people have said this looks like a spaceship. Um, you know, I've, I've heard all kind of crazy things about this bottle, but this is a uh, bottle uh, is created by Pierre Denard, one of the greatest bottle, the greatest bottle designer of all time. He created this bottle. Um, and, and so um, be careful when you buy those vintage bottles because the 
bergamot and the mandarin orange, the citruses in the top of this, for whatever reason, especially in the splash, have a high propensity to go off. Okay, so like this bottle, if you can get past the first 15 to 20 minutes, the dry down smells okay. Um, but it's nothing like the bottle here that had no air in it. And I sprayed it for the very first time recently, right? And you can almost see the juice color difference. You can see how much deeper and darker this one, this one looks. Um, and, and that's because of the exposure to the air. So just be very, very careful buying vintage bottles of this. If you can find one sealed, never sprayed, that would be preferable just to be on the safe side. Um, sometimes once air starts getting into these original obsession cologne bottles, the opening bit can go off. Okay. Uh, but you still get the beautiful dry down. So, uh, you get those strokes of herbaceous green and almost leaning towards, um, hints of foresty elements. Um, but like I said, it's not as, uh, emphasized if you know Musta Cartier, not as emphasized as the Galbanum and Musta Cartier. And then you get that succulent peach and the peach just kind of rounds everything out. It, um, um, adds to sort of the richness, the decadence of the fragrance. Like I said, there is a trashy sexualized side of this, according to some. And I, and I agree, I can absolutely see it. Once we start talking about the animalic bit, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but the peach adds a little bit of that. Just imagine biting into a decadent, dripping, sweet, uh, juicy peach. And, but it's brush strokes. Never forget, those ancillary notes are brush strokes. They're not right in your face from the beginning. You're not going to get this big fruity peach. You're not going to get this, you know, aromatic, herbaceous basil in your face. It's not ultra green. It just works kind of in unison with that spicy, oriental, ambery, warm, musky accord, which is the heart of Obsession, okay? Um, and so I think what makes Obsession so good is that powdery, ambery bit, which is the star of the show, just kind of growls as your body heats up, right? So when, when, when you start moving and, and um, your, your body warmth, move, you know, heats up, it works with your body, right? It works with it to add to... Uh, the warming aspect is your body heats up, obsession heats up, and it really works with your skin. Um, and there's something to be said. I mean, nowadays when you go to a fragrance counter, people expect to spray the fragrance on, make a decision right there and then. These are the type of fragrances from back in the day. You really have to spend the day with it. Um, the other thing is, this is a women's fragrance. I have absolutely no problem wearing obsession. None. I love wearing obsession. Actually, uh, I've been able to experience the women's fragrances. Uh, in, in many different forms, uh, and this is just one example. If you're a guy, do not be afraid to try some of these women's fragrances from back in the day. Remember, it was competing against things like um, Poison. You know, this came out around a very similar time. Christian Dior's Poison was a huge hit. Uh, it was competing against Giorgio Beverly Hills for women. So many uh, vintage fragrances. Uh, Opium from YSL. I absolutely love wearing things like opium, especially these uh, ambery oriental fragrances. I have no problem wearing these. Even though they're marketed towards women, absolutely no problem. I think they're beautiful. Um, I'm a huge fan. And so that's one of the best things about Obsession is how it just works with your body chemistry to, to warm up as, as your body warms up. And it's almost like that um, powdery, spicy um, ambery base, which is the star of the show. Okay. The powders, the ambers, the, uh, vanillas, that's really the star of the show in, in, uh, obsession. It's almost like the way that it's warmed up. Imagine how you warm up a baby bottle, right? You don't just stick the baby bottle in the microwave. It'll get too warm. What do you do? You get a, you get a bowl, you put some water in it, you, you put hot water in the bowl and you put the baby bottle inside of the water so that the baby bottle slowly warms up, right? That's the way that obsession warms up on my skin. It warms up almost in tandem with me. You know, it never go, it never gets too aggressive, but it's never too tame either. It, um, just, it warms it up almost perfectly and slowly. Uh, and that's the way that obsession warms up with me. So the warming feeling is, is a very important part for me very important part of obsession because many amber fragrances can feel heavy. They can wear you down. They can feel dense. They, um, um, 
they just sometimes feel like you have a weight on your shoulders, right? Obsession actually does the opposite. It becomes more vibrant, more alive as it starts to mix with things like the spices. And one of the most interesting notes in here is this animalic civet note. And that is really one of the biggest things that's lost. So there's a couple things that's lost in the reformulation. So Obsession went from Calvin Klein Cos Cosmetics to Unilever, and then Unilever ended up selling it to Coty. It's currently being marketed by Coty. Uh, the Unilever and the Coty um, reformulations are not good. I, I won't lie to you. They're not good in my opinion. Um, and what you lose is you lose that animalic growl, that civet, um, and you also lose the oak moss in the base. So the oak moss in the base is a big part of creating the texture of Obsession. And that is lost with the modern bottles, from my understanding. Um, and I actually have a modern Coty bottle. Um, yeah, so you can see, I'm not just talking shit. I have the um, Eau de Toilette of Calvin Klein Cosmetics of, of Obsession for Men. And I have the Coty version. And, and I've done many comparisons. I can tell you that uh, a lot has been lost with the modern stuff. Let's put it that way. Um, and, and so for me, the vintage becomes even more alive, even more vibrant. And uh, Eugene once told me a story that I think is a perfect representation of kind of what obsession stands for and the way that it works with your skin. So he once told me that he was wearing vintage obsession. And while making out with a girl he dated in high school, that he almost felt like there was a third person there with them, like they were in the back seat or something. And he kept smelling this uh, smell, and it was obsession. It was his. It was his fragrance, like come to life. So much so that he said it almost felt felt like there was a third person in the car with them. Uh, and because when their temperature rises, that animalic, ambery glow of that powdery musk, that powdery musk comes alive in obsession. To me, it almost feels like you're running your hands over the fur of like a wolf or a dog. Think about a dog with thick fur. That's a good way to put it. So have you ever petted like a Japanese Akita or, or, or one of those dogs, uh, Alaska Husky, one of the dogs that are really made for the cold. They're made for Alaska. They're made for Siberia. You know, they're not made for the Texas heat. They're made for the cold weather, right? Um, and if you've ever been around a dog like that, you pet them, you feel the denseness, the thickness of their fur. And when they lay down, if it's on tile or something like that, they get up. And if you go walk where they were laying down, it literally almost feels like there's like a blowtorch that's heated up that, that ground, right? That is the warmth of obsession. It has that, that, that alive body warmth. Um, part human, almost like part animal because it's like an obsession. And uh, the reason I'm going on and on about this is if you can imagine the fur of the dog being the musks. So imagine like the fur of the dogs being the musks. And you can run your hand through the fur and you get this furry, musky. Um, and you get the, the amber in the fragrance being the warmth, right? So you get the, the musk from the fur. You get the amber uh, from, from the warmth, almost like I was saying with the dog sitting on the floor, right? That's obsession to me. And if there was a song that could kind of define obsession, uh, it would be Duran Duran, Hungry Like a Wolf, which also came out in the 80s, 1982 to be exact. And um, to make it even more perfect in the song, they actually say that uh, there's a line in there that says, I smell like I sound, which is perfect for obsession. So uh, the song was released in 82. This was released in 85, two genre or decade defining genres, one for music and, and one for perfume. So uh, at least in the cologne, the further it, it gets into the dry down, one thing that I noticed is it gets earthier. It keeps that powdery, musky kind of uh, aura about it, but it gets, um, it gets muskier and earthier. Uh, and that earthiness is, I think, uh, a couple things bring on that earthiness, but I think a lot of it has to do with the oak moss. I think the oak moss has a big part of it, and there is some vetiver and frankincense and, and civet in the base like I talked about. There's also some wood, cedar and sandalwood in here, and jasmine and orange blossom and rose, so there are some florals in the heart, um, and 
you know, the, um, the way that the fragrance wears, though, the many aspects, the details, the, um, the details that never take over, though, they're part of the ambiance of the fragrance. It's almost like you see somebody, you make eye contact with them, right? You're obsessed with their look, but then you look at all the little details on, on the person. Maybe you look at the way they dress. Maybe you look at their jewelry. Um, maybe you look at their hair. Maybe you look at their shoes. Maybe you look at the car they drive. All the little details enhance your obsession with that person, right? That's the way that the fragrance almost wears on me. It has that heart. The heart is the person, right? The clothes don't matter as much. It's obviously the person. Um, that is the heart and soul of the fragrance, but all the little other deep details, the um, green notes in the top, the basil mixed with a little bit of galbanum, maybe some artemisia, but something green definitely there, but it never takes away from the ambery muskiness, the spices in the vintage version. The spices in the vintage version never go scratchy. In the modern, in the modern um, Coty version that I've smelled, it goes very uh, scratchy and um, synthetic. I don't like the way that they did the spices. I don't like the way that they, they made the fragrance. Uh, I do not think they did a good job in my personal opinion. Um, and it just feels scratchy, synthetic, modern crap really is the way that I would put it. The, um, uh, the green touches with the basil and, and the galbanum not being as amped up in Musta Cartier, for example, the thick opulent florals of Obsession. And there are some thick opulent florals in here. The jasmine, orange blossom and rose and if you really pay attention you'll get them but again they work as ancillary effects like um uh like the clothes on a human or maybe like the collar on a dog obviously the dog is the most important thing but maybe the collar catches your attention maybe it's a collar with some bling or whatever it is maybe the color of the collar catches your attention whatever it is right um th those are the ancillary bits around obsession that's the way that the fragrance wears to me so uh, they never really take away from the star of the show. That's the key. The ambery, musky warmth is the engine. It's the driver of obsession. And going back in time even further, one thing that I was really thinking, there are ambery, musky, you know, fragrances that go back even further. Like you could go all the way back to Bala Versailles. This is technically an ambery, musky take on a fragrance. I've done a full review on this. Um... And there's this skin-like body odor to this. This is also a very sexualized fragrance. This was Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson's signature scent. Um, and if you look at the the um, the ball at Versailles, the Ball of Versailles, the women attending said ball, yeah, uh, you can just imagine maybe they haven't had a bath in a couple days. Um, you know, though you you can just imagine the uh, smell back then, right? Uh, back in the 1700s or whatever it was, it wasn't as easy to just go hop in the shower. Taking a bath was a process. It was a, it was a big deal. Um, and, and so you just imagine sort of just the human body naturally smelling from sweat or whatever it is, especially if it's summer. Um, and, and so this, this sort of powdery, spicy, oriental, I said it went back to 1978, but really the reality is it goes back even further because remember, you're smelling a continuation. You're smelling this evolution. And especially people who are in the industry, people like Ann Gottlieb, I promise they know about things like Bala Versailles. They know about Lagerfeld Cologne. They know about Musta Cartier. And she kind of took that style and amped it up for the 80s. Because remember, it was competing with um, Poison. Like I said, it's competing with these extremely loud Giorgio Beverly Hills. And um, she did an amazing job. Obsession deserves all the love. I'll separately review Obsession for Men because it deserves its own review. I'll separately review Obsession for Men, but um, the women's version, I love wearing this stuff. I'm not going to lie. Oh, and the reason I did it today, it is March 26th, so we're coming down, it's coming up on spring pretty fast, but last night it got down into the 30s, uh, almost back to freezing, which we rarely get these coming up at the end of March in Texas, so I figured I'm going to take this opportunity with the weather getting colder to try and review one of these, um, you know, spicy, oriental, ambery type fragrances. And I'm so glad I got to wear this today and talk about it for you guys. It deserves love. And I love the animalic growl of this. There is something definitely obsessive. There is something that you could definitely get obsessed with wearing this. 
and other people can get obsessed with you when they smell this on you. Because even though this is a uh, vintage fragrance that was a huge hit, you know, you're if you're my age, you're in your 30s, probably your aunts, your mom, maybe even your grandma wore this kind of stuff back in the day. But nowadays, this type of DNA doesn't seem as prevalent. You know, no, no one's wearing stuff like this anymore. Almost no one, I should say. No one's wearing KL or KL Ohm. Uh, no one's wearing Ball of Versailles. No one's wearing Lagerfeld. And obviously, they're all different. They all have their own features. I'm going to do individual reviews on each one of those. But, um, you know, for me, uh, Obsession is special. And I'm very glad to have got to test it properly. Thanks to my good friend Frank for sending along this. And also, uh, he sent this little original packaging of Obsession. And inside, we have the original decant. Look at that. That's beautiful. Um, and you can kind of see Calvin Klein Cosmetics. The That's the uh, original distributor. They distributed their own perfumes back in the day. Um, so to me, oh, check this out. There is also a shower gel, which I should have worn this. I should have used this today. Had I knew I was going to wear this, I, I would have. Maybe I'll wear it back-to-back -back days. We'll see. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. Um, a shower gel and a body lotion, which I just think is damn cool. So Calvin Klein Cosmetics Body Lotion. I wonder if this is still good. Um, but anyways, that is my review on Obsession. If you have experience with this, which most people have, if you haven't uh, had a chance to smell this, you can still find bottles floating around for a respectable price. Try and go for the Calvin Klein Cosmetics version if you can would be my advice. But try to go for one that's never been sprayed because be very careful about juice turning. I got this off of Mercari. I instantly knew when I smelled it that the top was off. Still good into the dry down, but the top is off. So if you want the whole proper experience, experiencing those spices, the galbanum, the um, basil, you know, the peach, the citruses in the top, and, and blending into that fuzzy, powdery, you know, exotic smelling, ambery, musky bit. Like I said, rubbing your fur over the dog, rubbing your hand on the dog's fur, that kind of animalic, furry, musky bit. Try to get an un unsprayed bottle would be my advice. So anyways, that's my take. I'd love to hear yours. Leave it in the comments. Thanks as always for watching, guys. I love doing these reviews for you. Appreciate the um, back and forth, the feedback. Uh, we are very quickly approaching 8,000 subscribers, which is crazy to me. But uh, I appreciate every single one of you who subscribes and watches and comments and joins us on our little perfume journey. So I uh, hope you learn from me as much as I learn from you guys. It's always a pleasure. Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.